I now call to order the meeting of the directors of the Empire State New Market Corporation for Monday, September 29th, 2014. I'd like to note for the record that I will be the acting chairman for today's meeting. Further, I'd like to note that this meeting is being webcast and that we welcome public comment on the items on our agenda. The directors have received the relevant written materials in advance of today's meeting and are free to ask questions at any, at any time. Before we begin with the substantive portion of the meeting, I would like to ask the directors whether anyone has any potential conflict of interest with, with respect to any of the items on the agenda today. If so, I would ask you to please make an appropriate disclosure on the record at this time. We will then be sure that you may recuse yourselves from any discussion or vote with regard to such item or items as we move forward with the agenda. Let me pause to see if anyone wants to make such a disclosure. Any possible conflicts? All right. The foregoing having been, no having been noted for the record, the first order of business is the approval of the minutes of the director's meeting that we had back on March 28, 2014. So moved. Well, let's, I'm just taking a look before you... Um, Make sure everything's all. Oh, Susan must be on vacation, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, actually, she's back. Oh, she's back now? Oh, okay. Oh, regional council. Okay, great. Anyway, very good. So, are there any questions, comments, additions, or deletions to the minutes? Uh, Mr. Patel, I think you have a. <coughs> If not, I'll entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Sam. Yes, sir. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. All right, good. So no opposition. We all approve of the minutes. Uh, and the uh, they can be sealed for the record. Button down. Uh now I'll turn to John Evan Hornsby to request the appointment of members of the corporation's advisory board. John Evan, whenever you're ready to make that presentation. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning. This is a request for the appointment and confirmation of advisory board members. ESMC has an advisory board that ensures the accountability of ESMC for low-income communities in compliance with NMTC program requirements. The advisory board currently consists of five members, and ESMC now recommends that three individuals be added. Thomas Dolan, Stuart Mitchell and Michael Sizer. Thomas Dolan is Chief Operating Officer of CEI Capital Management, the for-profit subsidiary of Coastal Enterprises Inc., and a certified community development entity. He oversees CCML's investment operations and portfolio compliance, and also manages the CCML asset management team. He has over 20 years' experience in real estate finance, law, and community development. Prior to his work at CCML, Mr. Dolan served as general counsel for Fannie Mae's American Communities Fund, vice president and associate general counsel for Farm America Realty Corporation, and in-house counsel to the Peterson Companies LLC. Stuart Mitchell is president and CEO of Pathstone. He has steered the growth of the organization into a $48 million multi-state agency that is governed by a community-based board of directors and employs 500 people. He is active in several organizations that address issues of concern to marginalized individuals and families. He is past president of the National Association of Farm Worker Opportunity Programs and presently the president and treasurer of USA Farm Worker Pack. Michael Zeiser is chief executive officer for University Settlements Society of New York. He is also CEO of The Door and oversees all operations for both organizations as well as the interface between the two. Michael Zaza serves on the boards of the International Federation of Settlements and Community Centers, the United Neighborhood Houses of New York, and the NYC Human Services Council. Previously, Mr. Zeiser was the chairman, the chairperson, and associate professor in the Department of City and Regional Planning at Pratt Institute. Current members of the advisory board continue to serve and advise ESMC. Peggy Adams, Margaret Ellsworth, Ray Gillen, Sean Hogan, and Yvonne Stinnett are confirmed as current advisory board members, and all terms are extended until such members resign or is removed by the ESMC board of directors. The directors are requested to make three new appointments of the aforementioned individuals to serve on the advisory board and to confirm the current members of the advisory board with extended terms. Thank you. 
Uh, any questions for Jeanette, John Evan on these uh, proposed advisory board members, Sam or Mehul? I have none. I'm just curious, John Evan, how did we, re how did you, how do you find and recruit advisory board members for the corporation? Um, yeah, so we reached out to um, individuals that, that we know. We reached out to people within, within the state agency here, um, as well as some of the people out in the field that we've uh, got some recommendations and we put out some feelers. Uh, and these are people who really showed interest and we felt like they were appropriate for the strategy that we had for our application and the strategy for the tax rates going forward. And then how do you approach them if, you know, obviously it's, you approach them and see if they're interested because this is only, you, you know, your inquiry is sort of tentative, right? Because it's, obviously you're saying, hey, we're going to pre present you to the board as a potential candidate. Would you be willing to serve? You know, how do you set it up? Yeah, that's basically what we say. We say, you know, would you be interested in serving? Uh, and they can submit their, say, okay, well, we have to approve it by our the necessary channels. Mm-hmm. And what, you know, with with the five members of sort of the incumbent advisory board members who were, you're asking us to reconfirm, mm -hmm. um, with, have they, tell us a little bit about them and what sort of advice and support they've provided over the years. Yeah, so Ray Dillon and Sean Hogan are probably the most active members. Mm -hmm. was, uh, mayor of uh, Cornell, um, he was a long standing mayor, I think the longest tenured mayor. New mm -hmm. York state history. Hmm. Um, he's been there since he's like 31 or 32 years old. Um, he's been very instrumental in providing us with pipeline deals, as has Ray Gillen, um, both in the upstate New York areas. Yvonne Simmons is no local. She's mm -hmm. Harlem based, mm -hmm. um, and she provides you know, great insight there from, from you know, the Harlem perspective and the New York City mm -hmm. uh, perspective. And Margaret Ellsworth and Peggy Adams have also been, you know. Peggy, uh, Margaret Ellsworth is, is new and Sean Hogan is new. They've been on for about a year, mm -hmm. but they've provided some good insight. And again, just helping us identify pipeline projects and just talking over potential, potential deals and things of that nature, and also helping to um, think about, uh, you know, uh, advisory board members and things of that nature. And they, they also have seen the list of uh, potential candidates and approved. Um, we had that meeting last Friday. Great. Right. Right. So, How often, how, are they... What's the formal role? Do they have actual meetings on a regular basis, or do we just seek out their advice when we need it? Uh, well, we have two meetings on a regular basis. We have to uh -huh. uh, compliance and statutory, but uh, there's a requirement that we meet at least twice. Um, right. so, but if things come up on a meeting basis, we do separate and apart from those two meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, for for this uh, application process, we, we, we met twice, basically. We met uh, when we started the application process and told them kind of our strategy and what right. our thoughts were and got the intel and the expertise as to what their thoughts were about us uh, proceeding with that strategy. Um, and they were okay with it and, again, gave us good intel as to some of the things they thought would be appropriate for us and help right. us apply. Um, and then also as we uh, continue this process of identifying the five people and members and thinking about how about projects we reach out to them as well. If if we approve the three additions and reconfirm the five veterans, that would make eight. Mm -hmm. And what is that an ideal size? You know, what are other new markets corporations around the country? I mean, everyone has to have an advisory board, I take it. So how is eight as a number? Well, there's no idea. I think the, the average is usually around ten. I think uh -huh. that would be a sweet spot. Right. Around 10. I think at, at, at most we've had it has been eight. Mm -hmm. So we. We lost a few over the, over the years, but I think around eight to ten would be a good range. I think would be, be good. And, you know, you don't want to have too many people because then it's a cooks in the kitchen. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you just you want to keep it at a level where people feel involved and they're not intimidated and they can, you know, have their have, have their, their color actually. You know, as um, Ray Gillen, I think many people here know Ray. He's really one of the great economic development leaders in the state. He's in Schenectady, obviously, and a former and longtime colleague of ours here at ESD. Um, so that's Schenectady, let's say the capital region. You've got, you mentioned Harlem and some other, this gentleman from the door, obviously, is near, and, and Union Settlement is, is New York City. You know, how do we do with, and, and the mayor of Hornell gets you into the southern tier, but just generally speaking with these appointments, how do we do a geographic distribution around the state? You know, anybody from anybody from Sam's neck of the woods, anybody from Long Island, how's that work? 
Uh, well, we have uh, uh, Stuart Mitchell is, is actually in the Rochester area. Good. Um, and then um, Mike, Michael Zeiser is, again, he's a New York City person. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so the, those are, you know, again, we don't we don't hit every ge geography, but mm -hmm. I think we have a good feel of, of some upstate and downstate folks. Okay. Um, just give us a, an overall uh, reach. Good. And also, I think Stuart Mitchell, because he's been so focused on agriculture, really covers sort of that the rural the rural economy Absolutely. in a good way. Did you also, John Evans, were you able to reach um, out to the Fran Barrett's? Um, yeah, yeah. So exactly. So Michael Zeiser is actually uh, referred to us from Fran. By Fran. Uh, good. Uh, just as the governor's person, point person on the non for profit, mm -hmm. the non for profit world. Yep, that's that's a that's a good idea actually to talk to Fran. Great. Well, I don't have any further questions about the nominations, and I ask Sam and Mehul if they have any questions for John Evan on the, any of the, either the people who are being asked to reconfirm or the new names. Yeah. Well, that's not Sam, that's us. Good. Well, I was just about to ask Sam uh, if you have any questions about any of the nominees that John Evan has presented. No, but I'm glad you did ask the question about kind of the geographic diversity. Um, and I think that I think that upstate is adequately covered uh, based on Mayor Hogan and the individual from the Rochester area. Good, good. Thank you, Mehul. Any questions? No further questions. Well, then I'll ask if there are any questions or comments from the public uh, about this action we've been asked to take. Hearing none, I'll entertain then a motion for its approval. So moved. It's been, the motion has been moved by Mehul. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Sam. A seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing no response, the motion carries, and the, the new directors are thereby appointed, uh, and the current directors are, are reconfirmed per your recommendation, John Evan. Thank you very much. Um, you're going to present, I understand, our next item on this morning's agenda, requesting an authorization for the corporation to file a new market tax credit application. And I know this is particularly timely, our <laughs> meeting this morning, with respect to such uh, an application. So, um, why don't you uh, present this next item for us, please. Thank you. This is a request for authorization to sign and file a 2014 allocation application for the tax ESNMC was incorporated in 2004 for the purpose of applying for an allocation of new market tax credits for the Community Development Financial Institutions Fund of the U.S. Department of Treasury. ESNMC received notice of its first allocation of NMTCs in May 2011. In September 2011, ESNMC closed its first transaction, an $18 million qualified equity investment for Agrobank. And in September 2012, ESNMC closed its second transaction, a $12 million investment in Brooklyn ADR Development Corporation. The two transactions account for ESNMC's entire $30 million allocation of NMCs. ESNMC would now like to apply for a new allocation of NMCs from the CDFI fund and plans to submit its application requesting for a $60 million allocation on October 1st, 2014. The application reflects ESNMC's strategy to use an NMC allocation past projects, potential future projects, management capacity, and other related ESNMC experiences. ESNMC <coughs> staff has worked closely with ESNMC's NMTC consultant, the National Development Council, to prepare the application. The directors are requested to approve the authorization to sign and file a 2014 NMTC allocation application and direct and authorize, and authorize me, John Evan Hornsby, as authorized representative of ESNMC to act in connection with the allocation application and to provide such additional information as may be required. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you for that proposal. Uh, are there any questions or comments from the directors? Yeah, there's just a question. Um, that, um, Sam, did you have a question first? No, go ahead, Mayo. Okay. Just in terms of, obviously, you know, um, we took the feedback from last year's application that we received. Um, if they'll incorporate that sufficiently, I assume. Absolutely. Um, you know, based on last year's feedback, we, we basically have kind of gone, gone a different way. Um, we, we're taking a community impact and revitalization strategy. We've looked over 
the CA5 funds application thoroughly and basically redirect it to, to what we feel like addresses their needs and concerns the most. And that's affecting all the communities and affecting all persons and how the state best can do that. Um, so I think our application definitely points to those questions and, and addresses the way that the state does that and we do it very effectively. Um, so we definitely think that we have to do that structured in a way that we feel like is very, very strong. I'd also like to comment that I, that Brendan Healy and Susan Schaefer's whole group were really instrumental in helping John Evans along with Deepa Raghunathan, our Excelsior Fellow, and Rob Kwan and the whole crew of really, um, as well as the New York State's um, Washington, D.C. office, because this is a federal program. Um, we should, ESD should be incredibly proud of the work that it does, and I think that the effort to really showcase and highlight what we do and how we do it will hopefully have a, a better outcome th this round. But it's a, it was a terrific professional Good. effort. Great. Uh, maybe two days before the deadline wouldn't be exactly what we'd want to strive for next year, but um, I think the quality, the work product, I think Brendan and everybody else and John Evans did a terrific job. Thank you. Thanks. It's good to know. Sam, any questions from you about uh, John Evans' proposal here? No, but I, like you, Kenneth, uh, echo the sentiments uh, that Margaret just uh, articulated. Uh, I know a lot of work went into it, and uh, job well done. Good. Well, I'll ask then uh, if there are any questions or comments from the public regarding this proposal that we submit our application. Hearing none, I'll ask, please, for a motion for its approval. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Sam. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing no opposition, the motion carries, and John Evan, you're therefore authorized by the board to proceed with submitting the application for uh, the state's allocation of new market tax credits. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, we can. We can. You know, shorten this meeting to give you more time to put the finishing touches on this thing. <laughs> so the more time they have, every minute you need. That's right. um, if th there being no further business to uh, discuss this morning, we've taken care of our minutes, uh, building up the advisory board with some terrific new volunteers. Please thank them on my behalf as acting chair for their service. Uh, and, um, and, of course, most importantly, approval for you to move ahead with the application. And so there being no further business to discuss, the more, uh, discuss I'll call for a motion, please, to adjourn today's meeting. So moved. Thank you, Mel. Second. Very good. Sam, Sam, thank you for uh, being a part of this today from Buffalo. Uh, and Mehul for your work. And as Margaret has pointed out to all of you, including Susan, who's not here, uh, who worked so hard to set us up for the next round and hopefully with great success. John Evan, especially my thanks to you. For you, good work, and again, good luck. And uh, you got uh, a little extra time now to work on the application. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. Good day.